Right, dear God, we thank you that you are the God of heaven and earth. Lord, I thank you that you're not just the God of my heart. You're not just a private idea that just bounces between my, my mind and my heart, but you are a person that has created this world and you love this world. You love this world so much that you sent your son to liberate this world, not only from the demons in my heart and the snakes in my head, so to speak, but also the tyrants of this earth that look to enslave people with their wicked ways. Thank you, dear God, that you've, you've shown us the way out of the wilderness and, and, and on the path that leads to a land of promise and blessing and hope. We trust you with all of our hearts. We're leaning not so much on our own understanding, but in all our ways, we want to acknowledge you because we want to follow you as you direct our path. We ask this tonight in Jesus' name, amen. Well, so good to, to be with you again tonight uh, in Southern California. Uh, you know, we do get some snow out here. Actually, a few weeks ago, we had some snow in Malibu Canyon, of all places, and it's starting to get a little chilly again this evening, and we love it. Uh, I know some of you are freezing in the great white northern parts of, of, uh, of this continent and others, but um, it's actually a beautiful time. Anywhere, anytime, when we're together with brothers and sisters and worshiping together. I wish you all could come around this campfire, by the way. My backyard's not that big, but, but uh, maybe we can actually build a campfire huge out in the middle of the desert or something somewhere, or a giant stadium, or, or maybe even on the beach. Wouldn't that be great? And all of us could gather around a giant bonfire and we could worship God together and we could pray and ask for his blessing and protection. Well, uh, I've continued to, uh, to, to, to walk through the American Covenant written by uh, my friend, Dr. Marshall Foster. It's, it's called The Untold Story because in history books today and in history classes, kids aren't told about the godliness of our founders and our forefathers and foremothers who loved God. They feared, they didn't fear the tyrants, they feared their own sin. And they had a healthy fear of the Lord which led them to blessing and freedom and life. And it was because of their relationship with God and the covenant that they made with their maker that we have been enjoying the blessings that have been produced from the seeds they planted. And we need to keep planting those seeds if we want our kids and grandkids to enjoy these blessings and to use these blessings properly for the benefit of others, for the service of others, and for the glory of the one who gives us life and breath and everything else. Well, tonight I want to talk about this, this part in the book, which brings up a really interesting question. What is God's purpose for history? And even more specifically, what's his purpose for America? Does God ever talk about America in the Bible? Well, not by name, but God did create the heavens and the earth, and this is certainly a large chunk of the earth. And what is his purpose for all of history, and specifically America? Well, here's... here's Let's, let's, let's zoom in a little bit. For those of you who have read the Bible and particularly the New Testament, we have something that we look to called the Great Commission. This is where Jesus left the final game plan. He opened up the playbook, so to speak, and said, here is the ultimate plan. He said to those who were following him, to his disciples, he said, go into all of the world and preach the good news to all of creation. He said, Go and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to observe all the things that I have commanded you. So the idea is, go and preach the good news. Share the message that liberates men and women on the inside. Share that message to all of my creation and make disciples or learners of who? Of all nations. Now, historically, that's been interpreted by some to mean, well, teach individual people in America and in China and in Russia and in South America and in Australia to be my disciples. But, but I think it's, 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 the scope is broader than that and more comprehensive than that. I think that I agree with, with uh, Matthew Henry. This was the great Bible commentary commentarian or teacher that the founders trusted and listened to. And, and, and listen to what he said. He said, what is the principal intention of this commission? It is to disciple nations. So that means actually make the nations themselves learners of all the things Jesus has taught. So not just me as an individual and you as an individual in the nation, but the nation itself. 
And if you look deeply into God's word, you see that he has so much to say, not only about how to set you and me free from the demons in our own heart, the pride, the, the, the wickedness, uh, the, the greed, the selfishness, but he has so much to say in his word about how to send, set nations free in terms of their form of government so that people who have been set free internally can set the nation free externally so that they can take all of the principles of God and use them to bless other people. So we want nations, including America, including Canada, including China, including all of the nations of the earth to learn the principles of God because they always lead to maximum human flourishing for us and for our children. So this concept is that the great commission of Jesus, his, the big plan that he gave to his disciples and to you and me who follow him now has both a personal implication and a national implication. It's both a internal transformation of my heart and yours, this message of the good news that Jesus comes to set us free. It also has an external manifestation. So it's, it's both for you and me internally so that, so that men and women, young and old, have our hearts transformed it sets us free, and then men and women with transformed hearts who've been set free can transform their homes and set their marriages free and their communities free, and then transform their nation and set the nation free from tyranny and, 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 and government control and oppression. And then nations can set the entire world free from the captivity that tyrants want to place them in. But it starts with the internal and moves to the external. That is the comprehensive view of the good news of the gospel and the, the great mission that Jesus sent his followers on. And self-governing men and women who have turned in humble, repentant faith to God and follow Jesus Christ, have received the Spirit of Christ who lives in their heart, and these now become walking worship centers. These men and women, young and old, now become self-governing human beings that don't require a government to, to, to force us to be good or, and, 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 and beat us into not being bad, but the love that has been born in our heart for the God who saved and liberated us compels us to do what is right and good and have character and love our neighbor. And we begin to hate what God hates. And we don't want to do what's wrong because we love what God loves and want to do what is right. That's the self-governing Christian who is now governing himself by the law of God. Not forced by the law of man, but compelled with joy to honor his God by following that law. And that law is driven by love and it's sustained by love and its goal is love for God and for one another. That's the transformation that can transform me personally and you and transform our whole country. And so then the self-governing Christian who loves God full-heartedly has been throughout history the most powerful world-changing force on planet Earth. And history is full of stories of how that force has changed individuals, homes, and nations. Now, what then is the purpose for America? Now, let me be very clear about this. America is not some chosen nation. That's, that's, no, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a heresy. That's some cults may teach that. America is not full of a, of a special chosen race. No, that's, that's, that's garbage. But America is, because of the principles it was founded on, it is not the final expression of the kingdom of God, as it says here in this book, but it has been the highest expression of Christian culture the world has known to date because of, the, of its structure 
its form of government with three branches of government that comes straight out of the Old Testament. They talked about their king, their lawgiver, and their judge. We have the executive, the judicial, and the legislative branches. In, in God's word, he talks about uh, how Moses needed to not be the, the sole uh, leader, but to appoint judges who, and, and representatives who would represent the people in groups of, of 50s and hundreds and thousands. We today in America have a Christian constitutional representative republic that is modeled after God's principles in his word and therefore have produced the highest form of Christian culture in the world to date insofar as people follow those principles. And when we get away from them, we suffer. And, and our founders understood that not only were the blessings a promise from God for a nation that followed those principles and those covenants, but they would incur the judgment of God if they deviated from them, if they turned away from God and turned their back on him, enjoyed his blessings and used it for themselves. And I gotta tell you, I think that's where we are today. This is just my, I'm trying to ascertain what's going on. I'm trying to read the circumstances of what's happening in our nation. And I think that this judgment of God is part of what we are seeing right now. Now, I'm not a prophet, I'm not even a pastor. I'm your brother and I'm looking around and I'm seeing that if the shoe fits, but here's the great hope. Well, you, you, what's your judgment? Are we as a nation, when you look at how the unborn is being treated, when you look at the immorality that is taking place, when you look at what's even happening within the church, the way that we treat marriage, the way that we treat the sacredness with which we are treating the education of our children and handing them over to those who deny what we believe and actually teach things that undermine the things God told us to teach our children and so many other things. Could we be under the judgment or the disciplining hand of God? I think we are. And here's our great hope. America has been used for the purposes of God to bring the good news to the world to liberate not only us but the entire planet and to bring glory to God. Our founders also believed what God said to the nation of Israel, which was a chosen nation, which was a special race of people. He said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear their prayers. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Well, who, who are God's people today? Well, all those who have turned from their sin and embraced the one God sent to save us, the, the Messiah of Israel and the Messiah, the Savior, the Redeemer of all people, of all nations who will come to him by faith. That's you and me. If, if we've come to him in faith, if we then, let's not worry about those outside the family of faith, if we, those who are called by his name, will humble ourselves and pray, and we're doing that. I know I'm, 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 I'm endeavoring to do that every night when I wake up in the middle of the night, here now, and turn from our wicked ways and seek his face then he'll take care of the rest and heal our land. That is where my hope lies. And the great news is that this is doable because we're not waiting for someone out there that doesn't love God to fix things. God himself will fix things if you and I just get our part right. That means this is doable. And so that's what our goal should be. Let's humble ourselves, let's pray, let's turn from our own wicked ways and let's seek the face of God and seek to please him in everything that we do. Let's pray. God, we thank you that the solution is not out there somewhere. The solution is in here somewhere. Our solution is not political. We're not looking to, for a political solution. Our solution is you, dear God, forgiving us of our sins, hearing our prayers, 
and healing our land. And you promise that you do that. You will bless a nation who makes you the object of their affection. And when we will acknowledge you and submit to your ways and obey your word, God, show us how to do that in every aspect of education, in every area of government, in every area in my marriage and in our own personal secret private lives, in the way that we raise our children, in the way that we go to work, the integrity with which we speak and, and the purity with which we think and the way we treat our neighbors. Oh God, help us, we desperately need you. And we are confident that you will keep your promise and you will heal our land. Use America, Lord, as a launching pad for the good news of the gospel, but purify her inside and out first. We recognize that we need that. We don't want to be like Jesus said of those religious hypocrites, whitewashed tombs. They look good on the outside, all painted up and look nice, but inside they're full of dead men's bones. We don't want to be like those cups that are dainty and pretty and polished up on the outside, but Jesus said inside it's filthy dirty. God, clean the inside of America, starting with the inside of me and my brothers and sisters. Clean our homes, cleanse us with your spirit and a desire to serve you with all of our heart so that America will once again be a shining city on a hill, shining with the light of liberty and grace to the rest of the world. Oh God, that's what we want. And so that you will be honored and praised because you are so good. And we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Well, appreciate you guys. And uh, thank you again for joining me a little late tonight. And uh, I look forward to tomorrow, Sunday, the Lord's Day, going to church and uh, meeting up with you again in the evening around sunset time. All right, have a great night. See you.